You're watching Gears. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Hey, welcome to Gears. You know, a while back, we started to build up on one of the wildest cars to ever rip down a racetrack, the 1964 Cheetah. At home, when I was eight years old, my dad first started talking about this project. And his uh, first um, comment about the car is that he figures that if he took one of these high horsepower Chevrolet engines and put it on a roller skate, it'd be pretty fast. All the Corvette guys were excited because the, the Cobras were handing us our lunch every day. And the Cheetah came out, and to me, it was about the sexiest thing I'd ever seen. There's nothing like putting that right foot down in the Cheetah. It started uh, March or April 1963 with a clean sheet of paper, nothing except the Corvette driveline, just the Corvette pieces. Uh, by May of 1964, the project ended. And people went crazy when we started building one. Because we're not just building a replica of a 60s race car, no. We are building a modern street version using state-of-the-art chassis, body, and components from Cheetah Evolution. The Cheetah Evolution cars sit on a TIG welded tube chassis with welded inner panels that create an extremely strong monocoque that eliminates the chassis flex that plagued the original Cheetah. It also utilizes wider, more modern C4 Corvette suspension for superior handling and control. Now, just like the original cars, the skin is a special hand laminated fiberglass body that's loaded with many features only available on the Cheetah Evolution cars. Flared front fenders allow for wider tires. A reshaped grill not only looks better, but increases airflow. And A-pillars were added to the windshield and the doors for greater rigidity. All of these things improve on the classic design in ways that the original designer, Bill Thomas, hoped to do, but never got around to it. Things that I knew my dad wanted to fix in the car, but never got around to it, because the project ended and he went on to the big blog development and all that. And number one was holding the doors open. The number two was getting a glass windshield in it. And number three, keeping the hood from resting on the nose of the car, resting on the ground. So I called up Craig and I found out that he had a safety glass front windshield in the car. He put A-pillars in there. He did a double layer door with an A-pillar in it and put real locks in the thing. And then he put the little gas struts to hold the door open. Every, every che cheetah pictures you ever seen, usually there's somebody behind it holding the doors open. And when we started putting it together, people began to see not only how unique these cars really were back in the 60s, but also the potential of building one today with modern components. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, since we wanted our Cheetah to be especially wicked, we started with a Chevy LSX 454 crate engine and topped it with a Hillborn stack injection that resulted in 637 horsepower on the dyno. <laughs> Now, to get that power to the ground, we backed it with a Magnum six-speed and shoehorned the whole mess into the lightweight chassis. Where it had, surprisingly, plenty of room. All right, with all the major components in place, like the engine and transmission, now comes all the fitting and details that make or break a project, like cutting the holes for the fuel injectors. Now, obviously, the idea here is to keep these openings as small as possible for a nice clean look, but still leave enough room for the air filters and the fuel lines and the electrical and everything that goes on this fuel injection unit. Now, this may seem like a lot of work, but believe me, you will be happy once it's all fitting. It looks like we need to take off a little more on this inside. Now once we have clearance around the ram tubes, 
We'll pop on the BBR air filters and check again. Now, as you can see, it's close, but it does clear, and that's all we're after. Okay, once that's done, we're going to move on to other body panels, like the doors. Now, in the past, when you mentioned doors on a kit car, people just rolled their eyes because they were notorious for never fitting. Fortunately, these newer component cars are a whole different animal because the doors usually come pre-fit, and all you have to do is a little bit of shimming and fitting to get them perfect. Now, one thing you do need to decide at this point is how you're going to latch the doors. Fortunately, the aftermarket is full of all kinds of cool latches. But for this car, we wanted something really unique. So we went to Hendrix Manufacturing and picked up these aluminum door latches for experimental aircraft. <laughs> yeah. Now, the way they work is to open the door, you push here, rotate the handle. Then when you release it, the handle goes back and mounts flush to the body. Now, if you think these look cool here, you wait till you see them on the car. Okay, the handle is in. But there's a little more to it than that, because now you need to decide what latch you're going to use with that handle. And fortunately, Watson Streetworks has got a lot of options for you. They have hood style latches, trunk style latches, and door style latches in different sizes. Any of these would work, but these are going to work the best for this car. Now, they also have this bell crank system that allows you to run a cable from the latch up to the handle and go around things like windows or other obstructions. That's a nice kit for kit cars or old hot rods. Now, once you have your latches decided, set them aside because you have to fit the doors before you put those in. So we're gonna grab some shims and we're gonna get to work. Hey, welcome back to Gears and our Cheetah project. Now, there is no doubt that the Cheetah was a very unique vehicle. And since they were all handmade, no two were exactly alike. But there were a few things that every Cheetah had in common. Gullwing doors, some sort of crazy engine sticking out of the hood, and side pipes. Because of the way the car was designed by Bill Thomas, there was no room to run the exhaust under the car. So, out the side it went. Now, a while back, we showed you some headers that you could get from Cheetah Evolution and how to build your own side pipes and mufflers. And that was great, but not everybody wants to do that. Matter of fact, we've gotten a lot of questions, especially from you Cobra guys, on wondering where you can go to get a header side pipe combination that you can just bolt on. For that, there's a place called Stainless Works. Stainless Works is the brainchild of Ron Fuller, and they specialize in custom stainless steel headers for just about anything. Um, stainless is kind of a high-end market. Um, most of the car collectors are really into their cars. So, you know, it's all 304, so we don't get really any rusting. Um, it stays nice. You can polish it to a mirror finish. Um, it just fits where the muscle car market's kind of gone. Not only do they build bolt-on headers for early and late model muscle cars and hot rods, but they also build some of the nicest header and side pipe systems out there for custom vehicles. You know, if you remember the good old days, you know, you kind of had to make everything fit. So as times progressed, customers um, expect better and better quality. So we TIG weld everything. We do it not only for the exhaust business, but our commercial side. Um, we have a 6,000 watt laser. We can laser up to uh, one inch thick steel, um, three quarter inch stainless, three quarter inch aluminum. Um, but that technology just keeps everything right where it needs to be. And yet, probably 90% of our headers are still hand TIG welding. Yeah. Once they know what you want, they start with 304 stainless steel tubing and build the headers with two goals in mind, performance and style. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to visualize it the way we do our prototyping is, you know, we're, we're just sticking pieces together and it, yeah. it was hard to envision the bends in there, but once you get it going, you can figure it out. As the headers slowly come together, each pipe is hand formed to follow the contour of the others. And then all are joined together in a custom collector. The side pipes on our car are designed with a muffler since this is going to be a street car. And since burning your leg on a side pipe is no fun, a stainless cover was fabricated to prevent that from happening. 
Now, while the guys were busy building the headers, Ron offered to show us around town in his unique hot rod. A Bell Jet Ranger. And done out of stainless steel. Absolutely. Oh, I gotta get one of these things. Yeah, I'm a helicopter pilot. Yeah. Um, have been for 13 y years. I yeah. uh, have uh, just over 2,000 hours. Yeah. Uh, one of the news guys uh, was doing a car, needed a radiator hose built, flew out here, landed in my side yard, uh, took myself up and my wife, got back, she got out and said, you are gonna learn how to do this. Now, is there a particular way to get in here? Or? Just you did, did it. Now the foot pedal. They belong to me unless you want to try something funny. Don't touch the foot pedals. Yeah. So you just jump in this thing and go. OK, that's just cool. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I can't guarantee that going to Stainless Works will get you a helicopter ride, but it will get you one of the nicest set of stainless steel headers and side pipes on the market. Now, obviously, stainless steel headers are very cool, but they do generate a lot of heat, and they're hard to keep looking good. Now, of course, you can wrap them with some of the header wraps that are out there, but if you want to keep that tubular look, you probably need to have them coated. And Jet Hot pretty much wrote the book on high temperature coating. So we're going to remove the whole system, send them to Jet Hot, let them work their magic on it. And now, Gauge Tech. Brought to you by Stuart Warner. We were there when it all began. Everybody knows that you got to have good gauges in your car or truck so you can monitor what's going on with your engine and the various systems in the vehicle. That's why most new cars come with full instrumentation. Mechanical gauges have been around for a long time, and since they don't use an electric sending unit, they've been the first choice of racers and off-roaders and municipalities and service departments for years because they're tough, they're accurate, and they're cheap. This gauge panel here came off of a fire truck that's been sitting outside since the 70s, and all these gauges still work. Now, the drawback to mechanical gauges is for oil pressure, you gotta hook up the little tube. For temperature, you gotta run the hard line. And of course, for speedometer, you gotta run a cable. Not always the easiest thing to do if you're building a really nice street machine, especially if you don't have a lot of room. Now, electrical gauges, they've been around for a while, but they got a bad reputation off the top because they weren't very accurate and they were known to be a little bit fragile. You never quite knew when they were gonna quit on you. Fortunately, there's been a lot of improvements made to electrical gauges over the years, and now they're every bit as reliable, every bit as accurate as a mechanical gauge. And the hookups are just some electrical wire, so that makes it real simple. The drawback to electrical, they are more expensive. So if you're building a race car or an off-roader, you may want to save some money and go with a mechanical gauge. If you're using a modern fuel-injected engine with all the bells and whistles, probably going to want to go with an electrical gauge. Now, the choice is yours. Now, Quick Tip. Brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. You know, in most toolboxes, there's certain mystery tools that either came with a set or a guy has picked up over the years that they have no idea what they're actually for. Case in point, these that look like they came out of a dentist's office. Now, most guys have these in their toolbox, but they never touch them, other than to scratch their back or to kill bugs with. Now, they'll do that, but they actually have a specific use. For example, the one here with the 90 degree band, those are designed to pull out old cotter pins. The ones with the crazy bands like this, that's actually designed to help you remove an old radiator or heater hose. Now, I know you're thinking, what? Check it out. Rubber radiator and heater hoses develop a seal over time to the metal neck, which is almost impossible to break loose. So guys end up twisting on the hose and destroying it. Now, this tool is designed to slide between the neck and the rubber hose and break the seal. That way, you can pull the hose off without destroying it. 
So, the next time you see your buddy struggling with a radiator hose and he's got some of these in his toolbox, well, you got a choice. You can either pick one up, scratch your back, and watch the fun, or you can hand it to him and tell him where to stick it. If you'd like to learn more tips to make your life or somebody's life easier in the shop, check out the tips page on the website. And now, Parts Bin, brought to you by Air Raid, American-made quality and performance since 1992. Everybody loves aftermarket performance mufflers because they make power and they sound great. The problem is, a lot of aftermarket performance mufflers don't hold up very well. And some of them have a drone sound to them that will drive you absolutely crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Well, Heartthrob Exhaust has raised the bar on the performance aftermarket muffler with this HVS Velocity Series muffler. Check this out. For strength, the inlet and outlet pipes are supported by these inner baffles so they won't break out the end caps, even if you bang the muffler on a speed bump. For sound, the inlet pipe utilizes a Helmholtz chamber to self-cancel wavelengths, which in turn helps reduce any droning sounds. For flow, the center section uses a patented V-chambered baffle. Now, since the V is not directly attached to the body, drone and resonance is reduced even more. This unique design also creates a low pressure area behind the baffle to increase flow. Finally, the body is double-wrapped steel to eliminate that annoying ringing effect that you can find in a lot of single-wrapped mufflers. All of this adds up to one of the best-sounding, highest-flowing mufflers on the market. So, if you want a great-sounding exhaust with no droning, great flow and power, all wrapped in a super-tough package, the Heartthrob Velocity Series muffler is the best thing to put under your vehicle. You know, one of the most frustrating things about building a custom vehicle is finding all those little specialty parts that you're going to need. I'm talking about stuff that you can't get down at the local auto parts store. I'm talking about hot rod and custom stuff that you used to be able to pick up at a speed shop. But of course, speed shops don't exist anymore. Or do they? Well, Speedway Motors has been around since the very beginning, and they do still exist. And they carry all kinds of parts, from engine parts to battery parts, cooling systems, steering, suspension, chassis. If you're building a hot rod, if you're building a muscle car, if you're building a race car, you need to make sure you have a Speedway Motors catalog handy, because I guarantee you, they'll have what you need. They are America's oldest speed shop. There is nothing that screams classic hot rod like finned aluminum valve covers and air cleaners on an engine. They're one of the first aftermarket accessories to come along back when the whole hot rod thing began. Unfortunately, the main source for cool finned aluminum valve covers is the swap meet. Because manufacturers quit making stuff like this a long time ago. Well, that has changed because Holly has just come out with their vintage series valve covers and air cleaners for your retro guys. Now, check these out. These are heavy duty aluminum. They got the cooling fins. They got the classic Holly logo. And you can get them black powder coated, polished aluminum, raw aluminum, so you can do whatever you want with them. And you can get them with or without the oil filler holes. Now, for the air cleaners, you can get them with the paper element, or you can get them with a KN style filter. So, if you want the retro look without digging through the retro junk to find those diamonds in the rough, Holly's got another option for you with the vintage series. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Greg Overstreet from Mobile, Alabama. And his project is a 95 Trans Am. Now, he said this car is pretty special to him because he had a 93 when he was younger. Then, of course, he got married and had kids and ended up driving an SUV for a while. But then he decided it was time to get him another Trans Am. So this is what he got. Now, he says he's not much of an engine guy. He doesn't have all the tools, not much of a body guy. So he got a car that looked pretty good, and it ran good, but the interior was a mess. So that's what he decided to start working on. So the first thing he did was completely gut the interior, soundproofed the floor, and replaced the carpet. Then the dash was torn out and replaced, along with the headliner, and all the window and door weather stripping was replaced as well. 
the stereo was upgraded so it would properly crank to 11, and the Recaro style racing seats finished off the interior. Now, Greg says that the exterior and the front suspension, the next thing he's gonna dig into, but right now he's enjoying the car just the way it is. And Greg, that's what makes your project so cool. You don't have to do a full build up, a whole restoration just to enjoy cars. So, to recognize your project, we hooked up with our buddies at Woodward Fab. We're gonna give you one of these 10 inch shears so you can cut metal, which you may have to do when you start doing body work on that thing. Also, we're gonna hook you up with one of our project planning books so you can keep track of everything that you've done on that car. And we're gonna give you one of our Sergeant Rock packages, the shirt, the die cast, and the guitar pick. And finally, we're gonna give you an O'Reilly gift card to help offset some of the cost of that Trans Am. Now, the rest of you guys, if you wanna get in on this, get your vehicle featured on the show, you gotta send it into the website and go to Gears Nation and submit your project. We don't care what it is. We don't care how far you are on it. We just need something that you're working on. All right, that takes care of it for us today. Make sure you check us out on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that other social media stuff, and we will see you next time.